Good morning. Welcome back to JPCE Spiritual Talk. It's Jared Campbell. So this morning's devotional, the key to prosperity. So we're going to talk about the key to prosperity. Small reading from 2 Chronicles chapter 31, verses 21. Got some other verses in here we're going to look at as well. Before we get into this reading, this devotional, this reflection, this study, we're going to start out by asking the Lord, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask the Lord, shine your heart so loving, master of the pure light of your divine knowledge. And open the eyes of our mind that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us apply what we learn after having conquered sinful desires. We may pursue a spiritual way of life, thanking and doing all things that are pleasing to you. Your Christ, your God, you are alive to you. Give glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, in this ages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back to grace and faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Thank you all again for coming back. It means a lot. So the key to prosperity. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. So it's my honor. My pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. Thank you all for following along. All right, so the key to prosperity to Second Chronicles. Let's start out by talking about Hezekiah, the king. So the key to prosperity named the father son and the holy spirit and it says he was diligent in every deed that he began in the service of god's temple and the instruction and the commands in order to seek his god and he prospered there is a way to ensure that you prosper in what you do serve the lord with all your heart hezekiah king of judah lived in dangerous and tumultuous time he faced powerful enemies Idolatry was the popular religion of the day. His parents had rejected God and encouraged people to worship other gods. Second Chronicles chapter 28. Hezekiah had the opportunity to reject God as well, yet he chose to serve God with all his heart. He did everything in his power to promote worship of the true God. He digitally followed God's commandments. As a result of Hezekiah's determination to serve God, God blessed him. Hezekiah thrived in an unsettled time because he resolved he resolved to follow god despite popular opinion god will honor the heart that commits to follow him second chronicles chapter 26 verse 5 in times when worshiping god is not in vogue and when the forces of the day oppose him it takes courage and resolve to seek after god god is pleased to prosper those who strive to please him rather than to seek the approval of people. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. Hezekiah stands in stark contrast to Rubabam, an early king of Judah. It is said that Rubabam, it is said that Rubabam, that he did evil, because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 14. When you not set your heart to seek the Lord, calamity is the inevitable result. The surest way to prosper and your endeavors is to digitally pursue the will of God in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Another beautiful reading, another beautiful reflection. So, 2 Chronicles chapter 28. So I was reading 2 Chronicles chapter 28, and something stood out to me. And so, 2 Chronicles. Chapter 28, verse 13. This is what stood out. Let's read this. It says, And the men who were designated by name rose up and took the captives, and from the spoil they clothed all who were naked among them. So listen. Then the men who were designated by name rose up and took the captives, and from the spoil they clothed all who were naked among them, dressed them, and gave them sandals, gave them food and drink, and anointed them. And they let all the feeble ones ride on donkeys. So they brought them to their brethren at Jericho, the city of palm trees. Then they returned to Samaria, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That, by reading that, made me think of the Good Samaritan that's found in Luke 
chapter 10. So Luke. Right here, Luke 10. Chapter 30, verse 30. 30. So Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 37, talk about the Good Samaritan. Let's read this. Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by a certain, now by now by a chance of a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. Likewise, the Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. And then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let's talk about that for a minute. All right. So I was comparing that to Second Chronicles chapter 28, verse 15. Right. So Jerusalem is a place of peace, right? So symbolically, right? So symbolically, it's known as a place of peace. In communion with God. Jericho, on the other hand, was Rion, right? As a place of sin. So falling among thieves speaks to the natural consequences, right? Of journeying away from God toward a life of sin. Right? So look at John. John 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. And the thieves, the thief does not come except to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Let's look at verses 31 and 32. We're back in Luke chapter 10. So 31 and 32. The 31 says, Now by chance certain priests came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. Likewise a Levite. When he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed on, passed by on the other side. So tiles and positions are what? Meaningless in God's sight. When good deeds do not accompany them, right? The dignity of the priesthood means nothing unless he also excels in deeds. Cyrea of Alexandria said that. That the priest and Levite did not help the man also indicates the failure of the Old Testament law to heal the consequences of sin. Verse 33 here in Luke 10. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So 33, though the Samaritan, while known as what a despised foreigner, is also seen as an image of Christ. John chapter 8, verse 48. Before Abraham was, I am. And the Jews answered, said to him, do we say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? For he came down from heaven, right? So the Samaritan, while despised foreigner, is seen as an image of Christ. John chapter 8, verse 48, we just read, for he came down from heaven to save even those in, what, in rebellion against him. Beautiful, right? In verses 34 and 35 of Luke 10, it talks about bandages, oil, and wine are sacramental images. One, the garment of baptism, which delivers us from the wounds of sin. Two, oil of chrismation, which gives us new life and the Holy Spirit. Three, the communion of the divine blood, which leads to eternal life. His own animal indicates Christ bearing our sins and his own body. And, and in the end reveals the church in which Christ care. Christ's care is received. He pays the price for that care. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 says, For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20, 23 says, You were bought at a price. 
do not become slaves of men in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So get some other verses. So 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30 says, Therefore God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and your house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me, for those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall light, shall be lightly esteemed. All right? So it says, therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Look at Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Twenty six. Five. So it says he saw he saw God in the days of Zechariah but understanding the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Right? Second Chronicles 26, 12, verse 14 says, and he did evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. So if you do evil, you do not prepare your heart, right? You're going to do evil. Your heart isn't right. You're going to be like the priest and the Levi who walked by the guy who needed help, right? We must what circumcise your hearts. The key to prosperity is what? Seeking God, right? And one of our first verses right here that we read, Second Chronicles 31, verse 21, right? So Second Chronicles chapter 31, verse 21. And every work that he began in the service of the house of God in the law the commandment to seek his God, he did it with all his heart, so he prospered. So the key to prosperity is serving God with all our heart. And when we do that, we are rewarded, right, by our creator. But it starts with the relationship, right? It's not about religion. It's about a relationship with your creator, which we were created to do. Be in step with God. Do good. Right, just like the good Samaritan, do good, right? If you see somebody in need, help them. We must be the salt and light of the earth. So the key to prosperity is serving God. If you if you don't want prosperity, then don't see God, right? Don't circumcise your heart and you'll end up doing evil. Right? You'll end up pushing yourself further away from God. So we must seek him. Thank you all again for following. It means a lot. I hope you understand a little more of the readings and you understand what the key, key to prosperity is. You're given examples of how to seek prosperity to your creator. You're also we're given examples on what happens if you don't. You tend to land towards evil if you don't circumcise your heart. So circumcise your heart today the Lord and you will prosper when you enter into that relationship with your creator you will prosper you will prosper in so many ways and that's all I have thank you all so much if you're following before we close out though I'm going to close out with a reading right here And close out, we go right here, Psalms 100, verse 4. And it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise, and be thankful to him, and bless his name. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. This right here is a good closeout.
on how to seek the Lord so you can prosper. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Be joyful. Into his course with praise. Be even more thankful and more joyful. Be thankful to him and what bless his name. What a way to end this morning with that verse. So enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name from the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you all so much. Turn it back. I'm going to close out in prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, you've spoken to us your divine saving words. You illuminate the souls of sinners that comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as your spiritual words, but yours and good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Having a blameless life in contact without reproaching Christ the Lord, you are alive to you and your glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. The sages, amen. Our Father, who art in heavens, how that be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses. And forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, endless ages. Amen. We depart in peace in the name of the Lord, brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all, go in peace. Shalom, shalom. The Lord is our shepherd. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. The sages. Amen. Chair Wesley Campbell. All right. Good morning. Good day. I love you all so much. JPCE Spiritual Talk. Never, ever hold back. Right. Seek truth. Give him your heart. He does the rest. Right. Circumcise, circumcise your hearts. Right. Enter, enter into that relationship with your creator. The key to prosperity is that relationship with God. Seek his ways, his understanding, and then put all that to action right, by doing it, by imitating Christ. Right? I love you all so much. That's all I have. JPC Spiritual Talk. I'm out.